And joining us now on the debate, Marisa Sterling, liberal candidate in the riding of Toronto Danforth, Carol Williams, progressive conservative candidate for Scarborough Centre, Jagmeet Singh, NDP candidate for the riding of Bramalee, Gore Moulton, and Judith Van Veldhausen, Green Party candidate right here in the riding of St. Paul's. And we welcome all you Ontario first timers to the agenda. It's Thank nice you. to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here, okay. Steve. I'm going to make this wild assumption that our viewers don't know you. So as you go knocking on doors, Marisa, you first, and you've got to make the pitch. Knock, knock, hello. Here's who I am. What do you say? My name is Marisa Sterling. I'm your liberal candidate for Toronto Danforth. 30 years ago, at the age of 12, I was a page in the Legislative Assembly. And at that point in time, I was so impressed with what the MPPs were doing. I wanted to be one myself one day. So here I am, 30 years later, and I bring technical knowledge as the only female engineer running in this election race. I bring phenomenal governance experience as a community volunteer, and that's underpinned with a Liberal Party that has a very strong record that I'm very proud to be a part of. Hmm. Has there ever been a female engineer elected in Ontario? Not to my knowledge, You Steve. would be the first. I would be the first. Carol, what do you say? Well, after I breathe and, uh, you know, from walking around, um, I generally say, hello, my name is Carol Williams. How are you? <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> <And> <laughs> what are you doing? And I introduce myself and I say, I am the progressive conservative candidate for Scarborough Centre. And uh, I have been out uh, talking to my neighbours about the upcoming election. I'm a former uh, retired high school principal and um, I would be honoured if I could represent Scarborough Centre. And then I engage and I usually ask and say, um, you know, are, do you have any general concerns? What can I? What, what is it that you would like to tell me as a possible representative uh, for um, for you in the upcoming election? And then you're off to the races. Uh, yes, you know, and I. I I, I don't do the same thing every time at every door. It depends. Sometimes it's a, a, a guy without a shirt meets me, and sometimes it's a lady with four children hanging out. So it depends. Hmm. But it's always, <laughs> how are you? We'll hear more of those stories as we go along. <laughs> yes. Okay. Jagni, what do you say? Uh, you know what? I try to get into um, uh, people in my writing like bold people. They like the boldness. So I try to stress the fact that I'm a lawyer by trade, and I fight for my clients in the courtroom, and I'll fight for you outside the courtroom. I'll fight for you in Queen's Park. I try to... Um, ex can I exact, not um, emphasize the point that uh, you need an advocate. You need someone who's going to fight for you for whatever your concerns may be and really approach it that way. And I find that people are very receptive to that. I also highlight the fact that in our campaign office, we have a, a whole new team of young youngsters. We have, uh, uh, I would say, the average age of our volunteers is about 15 or 16. We have also say young people there. About 30 volunteers show, ev show up every day, and they're all under 20. And I try to you know, show that we have this new kind of passionate team of uh, young, enthusiastic people. And that seems to really resonate with people who want a different type of politics. And they like the idea that there's young people involved. Judith. I say hi. My name is Judith. I'm uh, the Green Party candidate right here in St. Paul's because they seem to really like the fact that I actually live in the riding and, and running in the riding. And then I say what I'm focused on is on reconnecting people with their communities. I'm focused on promoting proactive health solutions for everyone. And that's a really big issue with me. It's very close to my heart. And that uh, I enjoy spending time with my family here in St. Paul's, and I hope hmm. they do the same. Did you know, Marisa, when you were a page all those many years ago, that you were a liberal? Absolutely. You did? I did. So it's not a recent relationship with the party? It, come back, it comes down to our values, sort of core values, core beliefs that my parents have instilled in me, making sure that we take care of others, uh, we help as much as possible, and uh, contribute that we're a society all together, that we need to work together. So those, I believe, are liberal values. And so I knew that early on, and I've always uh, made my decisions that same way. Gotcha. And Carol, you as a conservative, I mean, if, when you were in the classroom running schools, they try to keep partisan politics out of schools. I know right, they, they try. do. So they were you a Tory then? Uh, yes, and I think that it, was, it would have been very difficult in my youth to put a label on it, but I had always had a very profound understanding about self-responsibility, taking ownership for the problems in your life, uh, those kinds of things that were instilled in me by my parents. And so as I grew into adulthood, uh, the conservative label was the one that so neatly fit in with my values and my parents' values. So mm -hmm. in that sense, yes. But in the in the early 60s and 70s, and I know I'm the oldest one at the table here, with these lovely young candidates. <laughs> well, young enough to be your children. Young <laughs> enough to be my yes. children, yes. and uh, it's, it's so delightful to be here. But um, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, I probably did not have the label at the time, but uh, my values, yes, the orientation yeah. was there. Jagmeet, uh, complete the following sentence. I am a New Democrat because... 
I care about people and I care about human rights, uh, workers' rights, uh, putting people first, really. Um, my concerns have always been, uh, as a young kind of university student, I was involved with uh, activism on a level of peace movements, uh, you know, stopping tuition fee increases. So more of that grassroots uh, activism is what I was uh, initially very interested in. So when and, did you pick the NDP? Uh, you know what, just uh, before the federal election, uh, I ran for the first time as a, uh, this is my first year as a, as a politician or a political candidate, if I, if I may say. Uh, and I, I became a uh, NDP -er right before the, the federal campaign. Did you run in that election? As well? I ran in that election. You yeah. ran, and this yeah. is the first time as a provincial. First candidate. time as a provincial candidate. Yeah. Okay, Judith. Sorry. What was green it? because. Green because. I really do want to build stronger communities, and that's the foundation of the Green Party's message: is empowering local communities, empo empowering local citizens, and that's really what I'm in hmm. for. How, how does it work in the Green Party? Do, do they come to you, or do you go to them and say? I want to carry your flag into this election. Well, in my case, in particular, I definitely went to them. I was all over them. They, uh, I kept knocking at their door and saying, what else can I do? <laughs> what else can I do to help you, you know? And I just kept showing up. They said, geez, I guess you want to be a candidate, don't you? But uh, yeah, it was, it was really great. Carol, how about you? Do you go to them or they come to you? Oh, I, I went to them and, uh, you know, it was a, a little bit nerve wracking at first because uh, I knew that I run, wanted to run for MPP because I was encouraged by, you know, some people in my neighborhood and by friends. And uh, so I just called up the writing association, said, hello, hi, I would like to, uh, you know, run for uh, MPP in Scarborough Center. To which they said, yes, come on in for an interview and... Uh, Did you have to it, fight for your nomination? Um, reasonably so, yes. There was another one other person contending for it. Gotcha. Um, but you know what? It was, a, it was a joyful process, that whole process of meeting the writing association and uh, it, was, it was simpatico at the very beginning and okay. that was nice. Marisa, how about you? Absolutely. Are, did they come to you or did you go to them? I went to them. I went to them. There's a pattern development yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> you went to them and said, I want to be your flag bearer. I did. And what happened? I did. I went there and I said, I'm, I'm really interested. I want to participate uh, with the party. I want to make more of a difference uh, with my community. And that's why I wanted to become, I want to become the MPP. And um, I asked, how do I do this? How do I start? You know, what's the process? What do I do? And uh, it's, it's, not an, it's not an easy thing to navigate and not an easy no. thing. There's, there's no guidebook um, out there. Right? Um, right? right. No, that. Right. Were they helpful? Absolutely. Helpful, but at the same time, it comes down to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We really are the ones that have to make it happen. And as much as some people can give us a little bit of guidance along the way, we have to really have the intelligence mm -hmm. to say, how am I going to navigate this and how am I going to get myself on the ballot? Right. Mm -hmm. And I had a contested nomination as well. Um, I came into the race two weeks um, before the nomination, so I had a lot of ground to cover. And it was, it's like running a mini election, and so it's a fabulous experience going through a contested nomination. Just so people understand, that riding wasn't your first choice. You had eyes to go somewhere else, and what happened? Um, I'm a Toronto East resident, so for me, Toronto East is, is, is my community, is where, is where I want to make a difference. And I found out that there was a fabulous, uh, another female candidate running in one of the ridings I was looking at, and I thought, that's great, let's have a team. So I was very happy to Helen look. Helen Burston, right? Helen Burston, yes. Yeah, so very pleased to uh, run right beside her next door and contribute to the Toronto East Liberal team. Okay. Yeah. They come to you or you go to them? Uh, you know, it was a little bit of both. Uh, they, they approached me um, at the recommendation of some young kind of um, student groups and uh, activists that were involved in the community and had some links with the NDP and uh, put in a word that here's a good candidate. They approached me and kind of encouraged me to do so, uh, to run. Um, and then provincially, after my federal, I was about 500 votes from winning federally. Uh, provincially, I was definitely approached uh, very aggressively. They said, please, we really want you to run. You came so close uh, federally. You're about to make history in the Peel region. There's never been an NDP representative in the history of uh, Peel region where I've been. And I came the closest in history within 500 votes of winning federally. Mm -hmm. So provincially, they said, listen, we really think it's a good opportunity for you to run again. Uh, the community really wanted me to as well. Did you meet the leader before running? Yeah, a number of times. You met Andrea Horvath. I did. I did. She called was me as well. Was that important to do? You know, it was uh, inspiring because one of the things is I really believe that uh, women are very under, underrepresented in the political system. Maybe not in today's uh, debate, <laughs> which I'm happy to see. Very happy to see. Oh, thank but you. No, thank in, you. in politics, women are definitely underrepresented, and we can't really move forward as a society when half our population is not represented in politics. Let so me ask you, now, I'm proud Marisa, of that. That, it's a. Um, you know, you're not a former sitting member seeking re-election. You are, as you pointed out, you ran for this nomination two weeks before they called it. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you even get a picture with Dalton McGinty to put on your literature? 
Um, I was very fortunate <laughs> because I had an opportunity to meet uh, Dalton McGuinty previous to my nomination. So that was a, a great opportunity just from some other events that I was participating in. So that gave me the chance to, to meet him, tell him what, I, what my plan was, and then to go back and meet him again and say, I, I won, so I'm now the candidate. And you have seen him subsequent to your nomination? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. yeah. No, he, he's very inclusive uh, with the candidates and with the party, and he's very, very supportive of, of women and has been really leading the charge in terms of the most women that he's put forward in this campaign. Carol, how much contact did you have with Tim Hudak before deciding to do this? Do uh, you know something? He sealed the deal for me because prior to my nomination process, about, about two or three months before that, he was in our riding for um, uh, an event and I got to meet him. And I just walked right up and said, hi, my name is Carol Williams and I hope to be the MPP candidate for Scarborough Centre. And I thought that he would just sort of quickly say thank you and move on, but he stopped and he turned and squared off in front of me and said, oh, so what made you decide to run? And he engaged me in dialogue right then and there. Kind of a warm, fuzzy guy, and I like him a lot. And uh, so uh, if, I were, if I had any doubts, uh, I didn't then, upon meeting him and realizing that he so easily connects with people, just sort of sealed the deal for me. How about you and Mike Schreiner? Oh, yeah. We go way back. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, no, I'm just uh, kidding. Mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, did a ton of volunteer at the leader's office before uh, running for election, and that's how I came to know Mike Schreiner very, very well. Super down-to-earth, really serious family man, and uh, I really admire his passion and his leadership. Speaking of family, I want to know what your family and friends said to you when you said to them, guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> Go ahead, Jug. Get us started here. Well, and in fact, when you said to them, I'm going to do this a second time in one year. <laughs> the second time. Now, the second time was when I got a little bit of, you sure you're ready for this? Uh, this was tough. The first time was very tough. Uh, people were very excited. Um, let's talk about the second time, though. I mean, it, it was the first year of being involved in politics. We really didn't know what it was going to be like. And uh, my parents hadn't seen me uh, sometimes weeks at end, hadn't seen me, and, I, and we lived... At that point, we lived together. Um, uh, there's times where I didn't see my friends for time, like stretches of period, you know long periods of time. And I'm sure you guys are all familiar oh, with yes, that. Yes. And uh, yeah, difficult. so they they were, were behind you 100%. But if you're sure about this, then you know think about it twice before you make this uh, jump in again. Carol, how about mm -hmm. your friends and family? Do you know what? Um, my mom and dad, Val and Errol, uh, they were delighted, just delighted. Especially my father, uh, who said, "Hmm." You're going up against the big guns, are you? And uh, so they were very supportive and uh, vowed to help and so on. My friends uh, were concerned. Uh, they wanted to make sure that I thought about it, that I had done some strong discernment around this decision. And then right after that, they were there. How can we help? Judith? Mm -hmm. We have a very young son. I have a two-year-old at you home. Have a two-year-old. And so there were some serious concerns about mm -hmm. running. Mm -hmm. However, my husband said, you have to do this. This has been in your blood for a long time. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. And so he's been incredibly supportive. Good man. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is. Marisa, how about you? Well, my friends uh, thought I was crazy. And I think <laughs> most of them still do. <laughs> and they said to me, why would I give up a great job that I have right now, take a leave of absence, have no income during this election, uh, why would I put myself out into the public and be under scrutiny as well? And why would I even just get involved in politics, which they sort of brushed in the sort of, unfortunately, a negative tone? And um, I just said to them, listen, I have always wanted to do this, and I'm always up to a challenge, and so I am going to take on this challenge. And I've actually helped to sort of lead them into what this is all about. I think my friends and family didn't necessarily know what what to expect and how to help. Um, but when I have a 13-year-old niece who emails me and says, Marisa, I want you to win, then mm -hmm. that makes it all worth it for me. So you've got kind of the young next generation coming up a little bit engaged in what you're doing Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, the door knocking experience, and I think you've all probably knocked on 10,000 doors oh, during, over the last me. several months. Oh, how, are, how are our knuckles? <laughs> <laughs> very sore. Yeah, our very sore knuckles. Can you tell us, Carol, what's the, I mean, you gave a hint earlier about, you know, men in <laughs> no shirts on and women with four kids hanging out. <laughs> what, what, what kind of odd things do you see at the door when you door knock? Oh, you know what, and I'm sure I'm going to resonate with my lovely colleagues here. Um, at the end of uh, each door knocking, uh, we meet as a campaign team and say, okay, tell me, what was the funniest thing that happened? Uh, we, we meet a lot of bare-chested men uh, at the door uh, who just open the door and there they are. Uh, and, do men not know that that's kind of... 
Uh, Rude not, to open the door well, with no, no shirt on? Unless you're George Clooney. Oh. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, and then in that case, right, Marisa? That would right, be okay. Marisa? Okay, right. so in, in that case, I think you have permission. Have you met Clooney yet on the <laughs> <first time? laughs> no, I no, I haven't. The second funniest thing that happened was a man answered the door uh, with a mouthful of toothpaste and brushing his teeth and, and engaging me in dialogue at the same time. So that was, I'm sure, you know, uh, uh, Marisa and Judith and Jugbeat have similar stories well, like that. Well, let's find out. Jug, go ahead, Jugbeat, tell us. What's <laughs> yeah. the strangest thing you've seen at the door? I don't know. Um, a lot of uh, interesting situations happen where you'd think that if families are busy, right. that they would just not answer the, don't door. Answer the door. Right? So it's kind of uh, but surprising. They do anyway. Yeah, they do, anyways. No uh, matter what they're doing. Right. <laughs> uh, so I've, I've stumbled into uh, a bit of a, it was, a, it was a silly argument, it seemed like. It didn't seem very serious, but uh, I felt a little bit awkward being involved in it. So I wasn't sure if I should leave or stay. But the guy wanted to talk to me, the, the individual at the door, but then was engaged in a very uh, passionate argument over something that seemed very mundane about something about clothes being put in the wrong spot. But then, I was kind of left on the side being like, uh, do, do you want to talk to me later? He's like, no, 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 no. We want to talk right now, but just let's just settle this. I'm like, uh, you sure? Because it seems like you're a bit busy. But anyway, so yeah, so it's interesting situations that happen. I Judith? That. I love that. So far, the funniest thing that has happened is I say to people, hi, I'm Judith. I'm running for the Green Party, and I give them one of my flyers. And then they look at the flyer, and then they look at me, and then they look at the Oh, you are the candidate. <laughs> I say, yes, I am not one of your re the representatives. I am the candidate right in front of you. Now, what does that mean, oh, you are the candidate? They're just so shocked, because usually it's... That show up. That, yeah, yes. that it's usually, you know, a team of people yes. going out on yeah. behalf of the oh, candidates. They're so impressed. But you're the real deal. I'm yes. the real deal. Gotcha. Right there, okay. Yeah. Marisa? I've had very similar stories as well. <laughs> um, I've had um, people sort of midway through their dressing process, or yes. undressing process, <laughs> Uh, ready for the shower, <laughs> thinking, you didn't have to open the door. No. <laughs> yeah. um, and I've also had really warm people. I've had, uh, I've had grandmothers that open the door, and as I'm leaving, they say, just a minute, and they grab me a little candy for yes. my yeah. trip onto the next door, Anybody for example. Invite you in? Yes, people have say. invited me in, invited and in? I, you yes. know, I try not to, to go in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, look, well, we should just explain that. It's not you're being rude, but they tell you not to go in. Not right. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, for, yeah. just for you're safety supposed to be out and, and timeline yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but they want to bring you in, and they want to bring you as part of their household, which is really, really nice. That's really interesting. And just uh, one of the things that happened to me is that uh, I've become, uh, amongst the kids, amongst young people, a bit of a celebrity. So that when I pulled up to uh, an area, just door knock, uh, there was a group of kids playing basketball. And they just flooded and just ran across and covered our car and said, you can't leave until you give us all autographs. Wow. So I had to give every single kid an autograph. And they pulled out different things to write on. Someone wanted me to write on his hand. And uh, yeah, so kids sometimes are really yeah. uh, they're getting very, engaged very in that. Yeah, they're very spontaneous. Yeah. That and, and you know, yeah. don't you find it difficult? I find it difficult to refuse to enter somebody's home, especially in some cultural environments uh, in my writing. It's a direct insult to refuse to enter somebody's home. Mm. So usually what I do so, so to prevent that, I step in a little bit and I say, oh, this is really nice. You have a, you know, a nice kitchen and, and I do that and step away. <laughs> have you ever, anybody here had a door slam in their face? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Really? <laughs> and we, ahead, tell me we what happened. cry like babies. Um, <laughs> well, I, uh, I knocked on the door and exactly said who I was. And I think right before I had a chance to even finish the statement, um, one was slammed in the door and one actually said, uh, in not very nice la language, <laughs> to please remove myself from the property as quickly as possible. What was the and exact quote? In the <laughs> <laughs> was it I get just, the... I can't uh, use can, the language, I can, sorry. I can, I can <laughs> but at the same <laughs> time, I noticed uh, broken toes. The person didn't have any shoes on, and they did have some broken toes, and they started to run. And I thought, I'm going to start running now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You had a door slam in your face? Oh, yes. What'd they say? I've had uh, one lady actually said, oh, you... you Conservatives are effing rednecks. Get the F off my lawn. But she didn't say F. Uh, no, she didn't say F. Yeah. She said the whole word. And uh, so I thought, oh, you're just, you're just so mean. And of course, I take it. But when I took the kids with me, I had 14-year-old boys with me who have the energy of 14 Energizer bunnies, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, that bothered me that somebody would slam the door in their face. Mm -hmm. So do you know I went back and knocked on the door and I went, like, come on, he's 14. You know, hmm. don't do not do that. Did that have any effect? Uh, I embarrassed her sufficiently <laughs> that she didn't slam the door in my face, but what I was doing was not honoring her. I was honoring my volunteer. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, I've mm -hmm. got to ask you... Okay, now we've had all the fun. Now we get to ask some of the tougher questions here. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Where are we going to start here? You're all going, uh-oh. <laughs> um, you know, politicians, this just in, don't necessarily have the best reputations in our society, right? And you folks all want to be them. 
and you had a you know you had a pretty good I mean you're an engineer right mm -hmm. which is a pretty good job and it's mm -hmm. an actually fairly respected job as these things go why does anybody want to give up something that's respected to join a fraternity which most people seem to think is so utterly discredited go <laughs> <laughs> She well, the, the, Marisa first. <laughs> I mean, the premise, I believe, the premise of an elected official is to listen to and represent the community and to then be in the situation to make the decisions that make the impact on the community. And that is what I hold as sort of the high ideal. Yeah, but the public doesn't feel that way. <laughs> so there's an opportunity for us to represent the public that way and to try to maybe shift perceptions. But it's a perception that I myself will not buy into and will not frame myself in that way. And when I meet people at the door, I say to them, I'm just like you. I'm a hardworking individual, holds down a job, takes care of myself, manages a family, pays my bills, and I also now want to do this. So I am really not much different than, than the person I'm talking to. Now, I'm guessing Greens don't have as much of a difficulty on this issue because you've never been in power, you never want to see, bit of an underdog. Do you still run into that kind of trouble, though? We still do. Unfortunately, you know, politicians are, are painted as just being bad people kind of thing. Um, and to be honest with you, that's why I became involved myself, is that every card that came through my door, I never felt like I, that face on the card actually represented me, and I really wanted an opportunity to be the face of the Green Party. Mm -hmm. How about you? Uh, you know, I, a little bit of a different experience. Uh, people really wanted me to do this. So I, I feel that this was something that the community really wanted. Uh, I was... I was hesitant to, to jump back into the fray, and it was so many, It was the outpouring of love and respect from you know all sorts of people, from young kids to to older to elders, um, and everyone really wanted me to do this. So I didn't I didn't feel the same way, but I felt like I was championing them. I, I was their voice, and a lot of uh, our messaging in, in the previous campaign and now is that let me be your voice. That people feel that uh, Bramley Gormalt and felt that they weren't being heard, their concerns weren't being heard, so they wanted someone who was a, a good advocate. And so they wanted me in this position. So did I don't I hear feel you right. What did you just say? <laughs> Sorry. About Malton? What Bramley Gore Malton? Yeah. Say it again. Bramley Gore Malton. Oh, Bramley Gore Malton. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> did, did, I, did I mumble it? I'm sorry. I, no, I just wanted to make sure I heard you properly. <laughs> did I okay. Say that? You. No, no, no. You, <laughs> you were fine. I just, I just didn't hear properly. So the question about uh, why go into this yeah, when you, you used to work in education. I mean, yes. We, we like our teachers. Yeah, we do. We love but, them. But uh, we don't necessarily love our politicians. So why would you want to be one? Well, you know something. Uh, I I agree with Marisa. Hopefully. You know, this is an opportunity to change perceptions, you know, around like that. And I've heard it a little bit at the door, not a lot. And I do hope to stay grounded. I'm, you know, uh, a woman with a great deal of energy and a lot of humor. And that grounds me and connects me to people in the writing in a way that's meaningful. And when I, when some people say to me, well, please don't change. Don't start spewing out policy. Mm -hmm. Don't do those kinds of things. He'd come tell me. And so I've made notes on my walk sheet. Go by and visit. He needs to just have a cup of tea. And mm -hmm. go by. So I've, uh, to ground myself, should I be so lucky to represent Scarborough Center, I've made just lists on my walk sheets of people just to visit just for the sake of it. Okay. You Here's, know, so. that's, that's nasty question number one. Here comes nasty <laughs> question number two. Okay, Marisa, you are running in the safest NDP seat in the world. <laughs> And the way, this was Jack Layton's old seat federally. This is Peter Tappan's seat provincially. The NDP have won that seat for decade after decade after decade, and you're running there. Mm -hmm. Now, I assume you all want to win. So why are you running there? <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm such running. an easy question, right, Marissa? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm running there because the people of Toronto Danforth deserve strong representation. And the great thing about a democratic process is every four years, you get to press the reset button and decide what that representation is. And when the writ was dropped on September the 7th, the existing MPPs, the incumbents, and ourselves, the rookies, we became on the same level playing field. We're all candidates. Well, yes and no. Yeah, I mean, yes, you're all candidates. Nobody's an MPP anymore. Yeah. So but Peter Tappins has been there for quite a while. And what's and also... you're brand new. I am. What's also different is that the community needs may have changed, the party may have changed. So that is why we have the chance to sort of reevaluate. Okay, Carol, you're running against a cabinet minister right. in Scarborough. Said Brad Duguid. Yes, he's minister of energy. Yes, very hard to beat a cabinet minister. So why run there? He's held the seat for eight years. Well, you know something. In my riding, two out of every five residents um, have the, the changeover has been significant. Two out of every five, you know, new to the riding um, since the last election, and uh, you know, uh, change. 
you know, this is what I meet at the door. And people are saying, yes, uh, uh, a new voice, a different perception, a different way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. And uh, why not? I'm putting all of my energy and focus into this. And ministers have been beaten before. They have indeed. <laughs> Jagmeet, <laughs> I know you came within 500 votes last time you ran earlier in the federal, but... Do I need to tell you how badly the NDP did in your riding in the last <laughs> provincial election four years ago? 14,000 votes behind the eventual winner? This is true. So why run true. there? Uh, you know, I like challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Think you can find 14,000 votes? I definitely can. I found 19,300 in the federal, okay. so uh, it's not a far stretch to find it again. Uh, I like the idea of saying that I can take on someone who people tell me can't be beat. Uh, I took out someone who, who people thought couldn't be beat in uh, Mr. Mully in the previous federal election. And I'm pretty confident that the people want, some, uh, want a party and want a, a candidate who's going to put their needs first. And I'm prepared to do that. And they want, I think, uh, new advocacy, new blood. Uh, and that's why we're all rookies. They want uh, someone fresh mm -hmm. and new. That's yes. what they're, they're looking yeah. for. And mm -hmm. I think uh, it's going to happen this time. Mm -hmm. Judah, same story for you. The Greens last time came fourth. Yeah. Uh, 11,500 votes behind the Liberals in St. Paul's in 2007. So why do this? I'm doing this because uh, we need to dispel some myths about the Green Party and their messaging. I think that people think we're sort of just focused on the environment, but we have a complete platform that addresses the economy, addresses energy usage. We have all kinds of um, par positions mm -hmm. on things. So, so yeah. part of what you're doing is? Message building, exactly, and disseminating the message, exactly. I want to I help build the reputation of the party. How much of this, let's talk some real, let's get down in the gutter politics here for a second, <laughs> shall we? How much of this is you all saying, Okay, I'm not going to win this time. It's pretty, you know, it's real hard to win this time. But, you know, if I take a bullet for the team, they'll owe me one next time. What do you think? Is that part of the, is that part of the calculation? <laughs> well, I have to build, I think, on what Jagmeet said, and I think all of us probably share the same thing, is we are all people that stand up to challenges, and we're probably not shy to a challenge. And that has been my record. So, for example, I graduated high school two years earlier than everybody else. I was one of 15% of women that studied engineering. When I decided I wanted to sit on a board of directors, everybody said, well, why would you do that? You're too junior in your career, you're too young, you'll never get a chance. And here I went and I was elected to a board of directors. So we're not shy to challenge. And I think we're all in it to win. And we're also, this is our commitment, so this is my commitment going forward. And I will continue to be committed to, to running and being the MPP. Uh, going forward. Was part of your calculation in Scarborough, if Tim Hudak becomes the premier, you know, he'll, he'll, and I don't win, he'll know that I did him a good turn and he'll help me out somewhere down the road. <laughs> is that part of the calculation? No, that was not oh, part That's of not being cynical to ask that question. Is no, it? no, no. Reasonable? No, Steve, not at all. <laughs> No, you know something? No, that wasn't part of the consideration. You know, I'm up at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm at, I'm at, you know, along with my colleagues. I'm at bus stops. I'm at coffee shops. Uh, you know, uh, walking and canvassing six hours a day. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> it, it, that's, to win it. You know, I'm in it to win it. You know, uh, like uh, Marisa said, um, uh, we, we love challenges. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we're running a okay. campaign that's, yeah, go ahead. You're in it to win it. Right. But you're not in it to win it. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, oh, see. Oh, come, on, come on. Come on. She's in it you're, to win it, too. She's, she's in it to win it, but she just finished saying that she has other bigger goals. Oh, yeah, here. I do. I totally do. So how do. do you motivate yourself to get up early in the morning and go knock on doors and go to streetcar stops and, know. you know, subway stations know. when you know October 6th, it's not going to be you over the finish line first. Yeah. I'm sorry, Judith. You know, you know, but you know that. Oh. I'll say the same thing to everybody else. <laughs> exactly. I think, um, to be honest with you, I, I, I feel fueled and I feel energized when I connect with people in my community. And I plan over the next four years to still be connected to my community, still be out there um, working on behalf of the Green Party. And so that's what gets me up in the morning, for okay. sure. Okay. Here's the other side of this coin. How do you deal with uh, voter cynicism, voter apathy, um, a, you know, among some people, I mean, certainly among those who don't vote, um, possibly a real ignorance about how this even happens. And didn't we have an election already this year? What are you doing here knocking on my door again? Chagmeet, how do you deal with all that? You, well, I guess I have a two-pronged uh, approach to that. One of the things is by coming up with creative ideas to get the message out. So one of the things that we did in our riding is that we did a riding through the riding. So we got a bunch of volunteers together, about 35 of them, all wearing bright orange uh, you know, NDP, I support Sing shirts, and we biked through the riding together. And just a way of showing, you know, in a suburb, first of all, I keep that in mind, we biked through together to show that this is something we can do. We can be green in a, in a suburb as well, and also show a creative way of kind of getting the message out there. As well, we, we look at um, 
issues that affect the local community. So one of the big issues in, in my community in Brown or Malton is uh, issues of job agencies and a lot of people losing permanent good jobs and getting those jobs replaced with uh, temporary part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. So we did a press release very recently where we had the stories of people and a lot of these stories aren't being told. The stories of temporary workers being treated poorly, uh, their wages being taken away and we had you know people who, who were victims of this talk about their stories and also a frontline worker who deals with these cases and it's a very relevant, very local Does issue. Does it connect? It connects with it people. Does. Yeah, and it got played in a lot of local newspapers. It got picked up on the radios, and people were like, this is an issue that uh, is being raised by this candidate. Okay. Marisa, how do you deal with the, the, the cynicism or the apathy that you'll find at the door? Um, it's very similar in terms of going back to telling a story. And the most compelling one for me so far of all the doors I've knocked on is when I knocked on the door and an older lady answered it. We talked for maybe 30 seconds, and she started to cry. Mm. And she started to cry, and she said, I am so afraid of having to leave my home. She says, what if I can't pay my bills? What if I get sick? What am I gonna do? I'm a widow and I've been here for over 40 years and she was too scared to even leave the house, let alone go and vote. And it was such an important uh, moment because what I said to her is somebody does care about you. That's why we're all here. We all care. We're trying to reach out and impact to those people make them know that they can't, they don't need to feel alone, they need to feel that they're safe. And we want them, we want, I wanted this lady to know that she could stay in her home as long as possible. We would do the things that we could do to help her do that. And I think we all have elderly parents potentially, we have grandparents, we know somebody that does. And so we know that this is um, very relevant for all of our experiences. And so when I'm able to share that story with other people, then they realize, yeah, this makes a difference. It's important that I vote in this election. I consider it seriously because I know somebody in this situation that I want to make sure that they get help. Carol, how about you? Do you know, uh, that's such an excellent question because about this, there is no barter for me. And uh, about this, I'm very passionate. Now, I'm a strong, progressive, conservative woman. But when I encounter someone who says, oh, you know, I, I, I'm just not going to vote. I don't care about the voting process. All the partisan, whatever there is around me, just melts away and I engage and, and say, do you know that there are people on the other side of the world who are dying for this right? This very profound right that we just take so easily for granted and dismiss so quickly. Do they object to your telling them that? No. I have convinced every single person that I engage, because like, okay, okay, well now we're no longer talking about whether you're going to vote for me. What we're talking about is squandering a great democratic right that we have. And that has, you know, there's been a struggle for women, there's been a struggle for black people. You know, I mean, you, you can't do this, you know. And I am glad to say that when I approach, like Marisa said, when you speak to people in motion, say, like, you cannot squander this. I have not met anybody who is able to continue their cynicism with that in their face. And they've, 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 they've often said, okay, all right, you have a good point. Hmm. Yeah. Judith, last 30 seconds go to you. How do you I deal mean, with this apathy and cynicism yeah, out there? I echo both of your thoughts that I empathize with them. I, I literally say to them, you know what? I, feel the sa I have felt the same way, and that's why I'm mm -hmm. doing this. That's mm -hmm. why you can believe in me that I will be part of this community and be engaged. I want to thank you all for coming in here, taking time away from thank door knocking, which you, may Steve, be more for effective for you. <laughs> uh, real pleasure. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. And of course, if any of you win, We'll take credit for it. Because <laughs> <laughs> look at this ice time you're getting here. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot to Carol Williams, the PC candidate in Scarborough Center, Judith Van Veldhausen, the Green Party candidate here in St. Paul's, Marisa Sterling, the Liberal candidate in Toronto Danforth, and Jagmeet Singh, NDP candidate in Bramley, Gore, Moulton. Good luck, and see you out in the hostings. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure.